Hey guys, it's Sandra, Sandra and Stephanie, and today I'm talking about jaw surgery. Yes, I did get jaw surgery. I got it this July, um, and it was an ordeal. <laughs> I just want to give a little disclaimer at a time. I didn't get it to make my face look better. I got it to prevent side effects of having a extended jaw, but I'll talk more about that later. And, and I'm putting topics with their time of the video in the description below because this video is going to be pretty long. Oh, I thought it was a bit long. People are in my house and they are very loud. Alright, so let's start with background. It began when I went to visit my uncle during the summer. He, he's also a dental surgeon and he noticed that my jaw was kind of extended on the bottom and he referred me to a surgeon and he noticed that it was pretty extended but we didn't know yet if it would be necessary to get surgery. So we waited till I got my growth spurt. And then, so a few years later, I got my braces, and then a few months later, I got my growth spurt, and my jaw, lower jaw, grew a lot. Like, I had severe underbite, and I started getting a lisp when I talk. And the reason why I got surgery was because the effects include your muscles wearing out, which causes TMJ, and you can't chew properly, you can't really speak properly, you have like a major lisp because your jaws aren't aligned correctly. That's why I got it, not to make myself look prettier because I was honestly fine with how my face looked ahead of time before I got the surgery. I was like, I was very aware of it, but I didn't really like see, if it hadn't been for the side effects, I probably wouldn't have gone to surgery in the first place. So then my surgeon recommended me to get the surgery. I could have gone a, I could have used rubber bands instead, as you know, a lot of people do who have braces. But that's not permanent most of the time, and so once you get them off, usually they just shift back afterwards. So we got surgery to make it long term. They picked the date, and I picked July of this summer because it was the best time for me. Uh, some people do it during winter break or spring break, but just a warning recovery is a lot longer than a week. So for the people who do it in like a week, I am very impressed. <laughs> Because I planned my surgery to be in the summer, I have to plan all my summer activities all around that. And so July, I planned to do like all my SAT prep during then. So that way I'd have something to do while I was recovering from the surgery. So what was wrong with my jaw, I had a, my lower jaw was extended like a few centimeters, which is pretty big. And so then what he had to do was he moved my jaw, lower jaw back and my upper jaw for like around a centimeter just to even it out and because i'm not 21 and usually girls suck growing around 21 i had to get a cut in my growth plate right here in my ear to prevent my jaw from growing anymore when i get older so i wouldn't have to get a surgery again and also i already had wisdom teeth coming out so he got that out all four of them out at that time so not only did i get double jaw surgery i also had all my wisdom teeth taken out so that was something <laughs> all right so the surgery uh, i checked in thursday during july the surgery lasted for seven hours and when i woke up it was in the recovery room with like, my family surrounding me and i was just like i think i was like can i have some chocolate <laughs> i don't know why like obviously you can't have um you can't have chocolate because your mouth is wired shut. So um, what my surgeon did was he used screws instead of, I, I think some, some used wiring. He didn't do that for me, he used screws. All I had to get was rubber bands on my braces to keep my jaws shut so they don't shift back immediately after the surgery. So during at the hospital, that was like the roughest three nights of my life. First of all, I had upper jaw surgery, so if you get upper jaw surgery, you will have a very clogged nose because your your sinuses are out of whack and you can't blow your nose because that will break your surgery. So you're kind of stuck with having a clogged nose and you can't really like, breathe because you have like pipes in your mouth. And yeah, I just have like some irrational fear of not being able to breathe. So that was probably like the hardest part of the surgery for me was not being able to breathe. But the cold nose thing, it pretty much your nose pretty much clear has been at least two weeks so i stayed at the hospital for three extra days and i was released on sunday and while i was there i had plans to do a lot of stuff like watch movies and read and i actually planned on doing homework i don't know why i think that's crazy but 
most likely you won't do any work and even then I hardly watch any movies actually because I was really tired after the surgery you know why because I had my period right when I had my surgery a little bit TMI TMI but that if you're a girl that's probably that probably might happen so not only was I losing blood here but also there so that was not good um, but yeah so my surgeon checked up on me once or twice twice a day while I was there and when he came he kind of just looked at my bands he moved some around every now and then and he and he cleared my nose using this like this pipe thing and it was it's so uncomfortable but it feels really good after he takes the stuff out of your nose um, post hospital I had we had planned a Europe trip one month after my surgery so basically that's how much time I had to recover until I went on an international trip for 10 days. So uh, the first week I did pretty much nothing. I was so lazy and so unproductive because you're once again out of energy and just don't feel like doing anything. So you're kind of just stuck at home and yeah, I watched some movies, but what I mostly did was I slept. I think after that first week, I probably got like, Oh, I don't know, like, I probably got around 100 hours of sleep during that first week. Yeah, it was nice because I needed to catch up on sleep anyways after camp, which is super fun. Anyways, um, yeah, so the second week, I went out on Friday to go watch a movie with my friends, and I told them I had a wisdom teeth surgery, which is a white lie because I did have wisdom teeth surgery, but I also had the whole jaw thing, but yeah, I didn't tell them because I didn't feel comfortable at that point because um, a lot of people beforehand were asking me like, oh my god, you got it for aesthetic reasons. Do you want, is it because you want to make yourself look prettier? I'm like, no, it's not. It's to prevent a f side effects of having a lower jaw extended. Most, most people were pretty supportive. Um, third week and fourth week, I had to go to SATU preps and I had to do work and I had to talk. And it was a bit hard because rubber bands were on my mouth and after the surgery, you have, well for me anyways, I had some guard on my roof of my mouth to protect the part where the surgery happened and so that causes a major lisp. <laughs> Alright, so eating. Alright, so first of all, at the hospital, since your mouth is pretty much either wired shut or you have bands closing your mouth you can't and you can't open your jaw because you just had surgery on them, you have to eat with a syringe. I'm sorry, you have a liquid diet for at least a month and it's horrible and you're limited with what you can eat. But you have but just think of outcomes of it and it's totally worth outcomes. Totally. Don't I don't regret it one bit. Even though I did when I was at the hospital, I was like, I'm never gonna get through this. But I did and I don't regret doing the surgery at all. So eating wise, um, the three days at the hospital I regressed from drinking just water and juices from the syringe. To, to eating purees and baby food. Yes, I ate baby food. I ate, what was what I ate? I ate beef mash or something and I thought it was good. That's how desperate I was to have real food that I ate. <laughs> I mixed it in like vegetable soup and ate it with the syringe and I thought it was good. It was not good. It was good I thought, but now when I think about it now, it's not good. <laughs> so. Yeah, you know, you're just gonna get pretty desperate. Um, and of course, you can't chew after your surgery, so you're just like just pouring liquids in your mouth and swallowing it. So right when I got home that Sunday, my dad felt really sorry for me, so we bought ramen and blended up in our Vitamix. So <laughs> it was actually not that bad. But then again, I was pretty desperate for food. So yeah, blended up ramen. That was the first real meal I had when I came home. And so yes, those first two weeks, I was solely on a liquid pureed diet. So I drank smoothies, which I made with a bunch of fruits and veggies. And I put protein powder in because that's one of the primary sources of protein you'll be getting after the surgery. And I made a lot of soups and we had like chicken oil soup and blended it up. And that was actually pretty good. And then we get to the Asian food. So my mom once cooked porridge and she put meat in there and blended it up and I had to drink it. And it was so gross because like it gets super starchy so it got stuck in the syringe and yeah, that was not one of the best meals I ever had. <laughs> 
But by the third week, I was a little rebel and I got a little tired of drinking out of syringe. So the thing is, you have to use a syringe because if you use a straw and you suck, you could create a hole in your mouth and that's not good. So you're stuck with a syringe. Um, but by the third week, I got a little tired of using a syringe. So I started drinking out of a cup, which feels a lot more normal. I also got tired of drinking liquids. <laughs> so what I did was when my mom cooked like curries, so that means the meat and potatoes inside it were really well cooked. I mashed it up really well to the point where if it was in my mouth, I didn't have to chew it. And I just put it in my mouth and swallowed. And it was a nice change of flavor as so I'm just eating from drinking smoothies and soups for the past two weeks. So that was nice. And by the fourth week, I was basically able to eat like eggs and fish and some soft pasta. And by the time I went to Europe, so of course you're eating out and I would say like the first five days I had to eat fish and pasta but last five days I started eating really well cooked meat so <laughs> I advanced in my diet a lot more than I should have which is I recommend you don't do that because if you overwork your jaw it's not good after the surgery but I was just really tired of eating food so I progressed a lot faster than some people so I took me off my liquid diet like for sure by the fourth week what i looked like that's probably something all of you guys want to know so this is what i looked like before the surgery yes my jaw was very extended and yeah but swelling wise yeah you're just you're really fat after <laughs> this see pictures um i don't really feel comfortable with me putting them up on the internet but if you want to DM, private message me on this on the account, then go ahead and I might share it with you. So swelling wise, um, most of it went down after around a week. No. Major swelling changes happens around the fourth day. Like the decrease in swelling is like very slow and you don't really notice any changes, but it's happening, I promise. You won't look like a chipmunk forever. <laughs> Numbing wise, I pretty much felt all of my face except for my cheeks, my lips, and my chin. But um, within by the time I went to Europe, which is a month later, I could pretty much feel everything. So I was really lucky with that. Um, with bruises, I got bruises around the fourth day as well. And it happened like here underneath my chin. And it was like yellowing bruises. And it wasn't that big of a deal. It did hurt a little bit, but that was like the extent of my pain. And then rubber bands. So before I came home from the hospital, my surgeon take up, took off all my rubber bands for a few days just to give me some break. Um, but after that, until I went to Europe, I had to have rubber bands on my mouth and triangle formation, and that's just to keep your jaw in place afterwards. So I was pretty lucky. I got my. I only had like three a month later, which is pretty good considering some people just have like them all over the place afterwards. And opening my jaw. So I progressed from opening my jaw to from like basically not being able to open my jaw to opening it to three fingers a month later. Maybe it was more like two and a half fingers, but it was enough for me to be able to fit like a fork and a spoon in to eat food. So that was pretty good. Oh, also, I don't know why. Maybe it's because I was drinking a lot of liquids or maybe the hospital was just really sanitary, but <laughs> the few first few weeks after the surgery, I had like the cleanest face, like acne wise, like and since I started getting acne, which is really nice, but yeah, I, I think it's because I drank a lot of liquids and that really helps you clear up your face. Um, so just major tips I have for you guys. First, first, check to make sure you trust your surgeon because he is doing a major surgery on your face and you want to make sure you trust your surgeon. Second, pack a bag before you go to the hospital with all the stuff you want to do. That way when you get there, you're not bored out of your mind and kind of just want to curl up in a hole and die. That was very negative. Yeah. Third, right before the right before the surgery, eat a lot of food. Eat whatever you want because you're gonna miss that food when you get back, especially crunchy food. Eat a lot of crunchy food. You'll be mixing you'll be missing that texture extremely after drinking a lot of liquids. Four, when you're at the hospital, really be careful about your painkillers because you're basically just given a button. Well, at the hospital I was anyways, you're just given a button and you click it and you get painkillers. And if you get addicted easily after you come home you get major withdrawal issues so it's just this doesn't happen to me because i don't really get addicted to stuff and plus i don't really have much pain which is lucky 
but some people I talked to, they had withdrawal issues, so be careful about that. So also do a lot of food prep at a time, find recipes, and buy any objects <laughs> you would use to help you make your meals, and that's just going to have your... So five, walk around a lot. When you're at the hospital, when you get out of the hospital, even a month after, move, don't just sit at home. That's gonna help you get your swelling down and helps you get more energy back. Six, have a lot of confidence. When, after you get the surgery, if you keep on looking at your face, this, I did this and I highly don't recommend doing this. If you constantly look at your face and like, oh man, I wish this would go down, I look a lot different. Of course, because you had jaw surgery in your face, it's fat, AF. <laughs> but have confidence in yourself, go out. Honestly, who cares if you're looking a little chubbier than normal? It's not, people don't know what you've been through and the ordeal you've been going through for the past few weeks to get this surgery. So have confidence, believe in yourself, believe in the surgery. And when you get out of there and you're now where I am and I am five months post-surgery, I honestly, I don't even remember I had the surgery at some points. Like I kind of just go through the day and then sometimes I like, you think you'll never forget the surgery. But honestly, by the third week, I kind of forgot like I got a surgery in the first place. Like you kind of just have to move on, live your life, and recovery will slowly come. Even for me, swelling hasn't really, not all of it has gone away, but a large portion has, and usually swelling goes away around a month, a year, a full year later. So just something to look forward to for that. And let's see, by end of, end of August, I was pretty much eating most foods besides crunchy food and by September I was eating crunchy food like I was eating chips very carefully though because if it punctures your jaw if it punctures your the roof of your mouth then that's not good but I guess I was eating crunchy food very carefully I hope that this has been pretty helpful for you I know when I asked people about surgery tips at a time all the advice they gave me was super helpful so if you have any questions or comments regarding if whether you should get the surgery or any tips any more tips for when you do get the surgery just comment down below i like how like my chair slowly went from here to here <laughs> i just i move a lot i move around when midterms is coming up soon for any of you guys who are still in school so good luck on that i know i will definitely need a lot of luck <laughs> a lot of exams to do and hopefully i do well on them also by the way i've been obsessed with this candle lately it smells so good. I don't even know if they sell this anymore because I got this like six years ago and I finally started using it because I found it. And it smells so good. Oh my god. Like if this did help you and, and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next week. Bye.